Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service this morning. A couple announcements. First of all, um, this evening, a seven-week Bible study will begin. The topic is this video series, The Chosen, be led by Bill McAllister, and it begins at 7 p.m. in the church sanctuary. Um, also, on Sunday, October 31st, St. Paul is hosting the, or this year's Circuit Bible Institute. Um, the topic is Christ in the Old Testament. The Bible Institute is held in the afternoon and ends with a Circuit Reformation service that will begin at 515. We follow our order then as we begin by singing the first hymn, O Holy Spirit, Enter In. <coughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made, made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge 
in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. <clears throat> Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for you and for His sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant in Christ and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we celebrate LWML today, let us join in the saying together the Pledge of the LWML. In response to God's gift of the gospel, let us all join with the members of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League and commit ourselves to serve and follow our Lord Jesus Christ. In fervent gratitude for the Savior's dying love and for his blood-bought gift of redemption, we dedicate ourselves to him with all that we are and have and in obedience to his call for workers in the harvest fields, we pledge him our willing service, wherever and whenever he is in need of us. We consecrate to our Savior our hands to work for him, our feet to go on his errands, our voices to sing his praises, our lips to proclaim his redeeming love, our silver and our gold to extend his kingdom, our will to do his will and every power of our life to the great task of bringing the lost and the erring into eternal fellowship with him. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <laughs> Everlasting Father, source of every blessing, Mercifully direct and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that we may complete the works you have prepared for us to do. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Amos, in the fifth chapter, beginning at the sixth verse. Seek the Lord and live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph, and it devour, with none to quench it for Bethel. O you who turn justice into wormwood and cast down righteousness to the earth. They hate him who pro provokes in the gate, and they abhor him who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and you exact taxes on a grain from him, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You are afflict with righteousness. Who take a bribe and turn aside the needy in the gate? Therefore, he who is prudent will keep silent in such time. For it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, who will, will be with you, as you have said. Hate evil and love good. Establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of the hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The epistle reading is from Hebrews in the third chapter, beginning at verse 12. Take care, brothers, lest there be any of you an evil, unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one day, every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have come to share in Christ if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. As it is said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as it is rebellion. 
For who were those who heard and yet rebelled? Was it not all who left Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he provoked for forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? So we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Christ. And as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go, sell all that you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks. Praise be to God. We, okay. we join now in the confession of our Christian faith as we speak together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And at this time, I invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Thank you. 
grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, along with the whole church, we pray, Lord Jesus Christ, help us to forsake all trust in earthly gain and to find in you our heavenly treasure. Hear those words one more time. Help us to forsake all trust in earthly gain and to find in you our heavenly treasure. Like the man in the gospel, we all have heavenly tre uh, earthly treasures to which we cling. For some, it's money. For others, it may be family heirlooms that have been handed down from generation to generation. For others, it's health or standing in community or even the respect that we have from our neighbors. Whatever earthly things you cherish, Jesus says to you today, forsake all trust in them. Don't stake your life, your health, or your happiness on them. Do not fear, love, or trust in them more than you fear, love, and trust in me. Or else you'll find yourself falling away from the true faith and caught up in the sin of idolatry. That was the man's problem in the gospel reading today. He did his best to keep all the commandments. He knew every one of them. He thought he kept all of them. He even interrupted Jesus when he was listing them off to tell how he'd been so faithful in keeping them. But keeping commandments is not enough. Because even if you think you've kept all the commandments faithfully, down to the very last letter, even if you think you've kept all the commandments perfectly and still trust in your earthly treasure more than in Christ, you've broken the first commandment and all your other holy work counts for absolutely nothing at all. Because you've made your earthly treasure your God. God tells us, you shall have no other gods before me. Martin Luther asks, what does this mean? And then he answers based on scripture, you should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. The man in the gospel put his fear, love, and trust in his earthly treasure. That's why he went away sad when Jesus told him, one thing you lack, go your way, sell everything you have, and give it to poor, the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come take up the cross and follow me. Could you do that? Could you live without your bank account or your family heirlooms or your standing and respect in the community? Could you live without the one thing on earth that you cherish more than anything? Could you give it all up, give the proceeds to the poor, and then take up a cross and follow Jesus, trusting him to provide not only grace and love, but everything that you need for this body and this life. Could you do that? That's what Jesus asks of you today and every day. He says, will you take everything that you trust in? Will you trust in him above everything else? everything. By asking this of us, Christ is calling us to repent of trusting in earthly gain. Christ refocuses our lives and our hearts on the first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. And Christ invites us then to see him and only him as our true treasure. 
when you forsake all earthly treasure, when you take up your cross, when you follow Jesus and put all your fear, love, and trust in him, then God strips away all your love for earthly things and opens your eyes to see where your true treasure lives. Then he fixes your eyes and your heart on Jesus, who is the true treasure and above all treasures. When you forsake everything else and take up your cross and follow Jesus, then you can see what you truly have. Then you can see that your treasure is not on earth, but in heaven, and that your treasure is not any earthly blessing, but every heavenly blessing given to you by the grace of God. Your treasure is the heavenly riches of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a German pastor and theologian imprisoned and killed by the Nazis at about the end of World War II, once wrote this. When Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. Today, Jesus is calling you, and he bids you come and die. He says, come follow me and die to the desire for earthly treasure. Die to chasing after temporary, material, ordinary possessions, and die to your selfish desires for fame and respect. Today, Jesus is saying to you and to me, and to all who would hear and listen to him, Come, follow me. Take up your cross and store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, true treasures that no one can take away, real treasure that will not rot or decay, heavenly, holy treasure that will never pass away. Do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth, he says, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So where is your treasure? Is it in the bank? Is it in some storage locker somewhere? Is it displayed on a shelf in your home? Is it in the accolades and praises you receive in this life? Or is your treasure in heaven? These words from our Lord today are a call to repentance. We all have something. Maybe it's big, maybe it's small, maybe it's everything. Whatever it is, we all have at least one thing that threatens to become or has already become the thing we treasure above all else. So today Jesus says, give it up, sell it off, give it away, repent of your idolatry and turn your life around. Let the cross take the place of that thing you idolize and then come follow me. <clears throat> As you carry your cross, at times it will hurt a lot. Sometimes it will be unbearably heavy. It will always be a difficult burden. And in the end, like it did for Jesus, it will kill you. But not forever. For Jesus makes you this promise. That cross that you're, that you're carrying is a sign. That hurting heavy burden of a cross is a sign to remind you that you have a treasure where it really counts. You have treasure in heaven. You have treasure in heaven because of what Jesus did on that cross. You have a room prepared for you in the mansions of the Lord. Because of what Jesus bore on that cross, you have a permanent place at the banquet table at the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. 
Because of what Jesus suffered on the cross, you have a home in the New Jerusalem where the tree of life gives its fruit every month of, all, of every year and where its leaves are for the healing of the nations. Because Jesus suffered in agony on the cross, you have a body that can be free from pain, a heart that will be free from sorrow, a soul that can be free from struggle, even an existence free from death. Because Jesus died on that cross, you have a life that is greater and fuller and more blessed than anyone or anything on earth could ever give to you. Because of Jesus' saving work on the cross, you have forgiveness for all your sins and you have the righteousness of Christ. You have a life that never ends because Christ now lives in you. You have the salvation of your body and soul by the grace of him who calls to you, come, follow me. Because of the cross you carry, the cross of Christ, you have Jesus. And when you have Jesus, you have every blessing of heaven. You have Jesus with you right now. You will have Jesus with you tomorrow, and you will have Jesus with you every day for all of eternity in the life of the world to come. That's your treasure. It's all yours because Jesus earned it for you on the cross. So take Christ's words to heart today. Have no other gods before him. Fear, love, and trust in him above all things. Go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up your cross and follow him. Do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Your treasure is in heaven. His name is Jesus. And nothing, absolutely nothing on earth can ever compare to the treasure that he gives and the treasure that he is. Praise God from whom all treasures flow. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise for prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. <clears throat> For humility and right faith, that none would dare to approach God in our own righteousness, but rather come before him in repentance to eternal, inherit eternal life by his grace in Christ alone, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For readiness to receive the Lord's correction that God would keep us from hating those he sends to reprove us with his law and from abhorring those who speak his truth to us, that we may repent and live, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit, that we may hate evil and pers never pursue it, and instead love good and seek it always, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For our president and our governor and all who govern us in the Lord's stead, that his favor would rest upon them and establish the good works of their hands upon us, that we might live in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For all those who serve us in any way, for all police departments, fire departments, EMTs, first responders, health care workers, 
for all military personnel and their families, that they may be protected in all that they do and receive your gracious blessing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all those who serve the Lord, especially those who serve in faraway places, Jenna Engelhart and Josh Lang and family and all missionaries, Ruth, Matthias, and, and others who serve you throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the LWML, who with their mights have supported many missions and brought the word of Christ to the world, that they may continue to be blessed with your gracious generosity in their giving, and that they may continue uh, in your service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all the Lord's servants who are afflicted, for Nadine Petrowski, Kristen, Courtney, Elaine Trainer, and Darren Trainer, Bill Berry, Heather Wobel, Doc Marlon Doe, John Schrader, Bernice Miller, Noel Klitz, Betty Bettenhausen, Laken Holeka, Glenn Runninghoff, that you may help them and satisfy them with your steadfast love <coughs> and grant to them healing in accordance with your perfect will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. In thanks for all the saints whose confidence in Christ the Lord kept firm into faith that we would graciously keep up that he would graciously keep us firm in the same faith that in the end we may enter with them into his rest let us pray to the Lord Lord, Lord have mercy for all those who serve in this congregation who serve in all the committees and and boards and all officers especially for those who serve on the call committee and that and for the call process, that you would bless it, that it may bear fruit and bring a pastor here uh, that is worthy to be your pastor here according to your good will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we join in singing our hymn. 